you know, under normal circumstances and all the examples we've been doing that we have done so far at this point in the book, uh, when we're looking for the transmission coefficient, all we would do is take this constant here, c, uh, apply the absolute value squared, and then divide it by the absolute value of a squared. So this would represent the wave that is traveling beyond the barrier, and so this would represent the wave that is uh, traveling towards the barrier. And so this ratio would normally represent the transmission coefficient. But the thing is, you should notice that the waves are actually traveling at different speeds within these two regions. Once you reach the region x is larger than zero, you have a potential which, uh, which would affect the speed of uh, the wave. And that's why this formula over here isn't entirely correct for, the case, uh, for, for this case that we have over here. And in the problem, it tells us that we, should, we need to modify this uh, formula by multiplying it by this factor. So apart from calculating this ratio, we also need to multiply e minus v0 divided by v0. So in the book, instead of c, they, uh, Griffiths uses the symbol f. So that's just the constant he uses to uh, that he tacks on to the term that represents the wave traveling beyond the barrier. doesn't really matter what constant you use. We've been using c so far, so I'm just going to use c over here. So now the first problem in part c is that we need to show that this is indeed the case. And then the problem gives us a hint that we should check out uh, the result of problem 2.19, which gives us, so that problem, problem 2.19, gives us the probability current of uh, such a waveform. And uh, I'll say JT, let's say this is, uh, represents the probability current of the wave that is traveling beyond the barrier, so the transmitted uh, wave. So according to the result from uh, problem 2.19, uh, the probability current of this wave, which represents the transmitted wave, is going to be equal to the reduced Planck constant times L divided by M times C squared. And for the incident probability current, so this will represent the probability that is uh, arriving at the barrier, uh, we will be using this term. And then according to the, to the result from problem 2.19, we get this value. And so the transmission coefficient is actually the ratio between these two terms. It's the ratio between the probability currents. So this formula applies for the other cases we've been we have dealt with uh, so far at this point. So if you go back to the case for the direct delta potential, uh, we also had to deal with the transmission coefficient. Actually, we were using the same formula. It's just that the prob uh, for those cases, the probability current, uh, these two terms were equal. So that's why when you, when you take the ratio, only these constants survive. So that's why we were only concerned with these constants. But now in this case, the velocities, uh, the speeds of the waves are different, so that's why we need to consider the probability current instead. And you can see that if we can take the ratio between these terms, you'll see that we have the absolute values of c squared divided by the absolute value of a squared, and then we have l over k. And then the rest of these constants, they just cancel out. So recall that l is equal to the square root of 2m e minus v naught divided by h bar, and k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. So when you're taking the ratio of L and K, these constants, they obviously they cancel out, and then all that remains inside are the constants square root E minus V0 divided by V0. And so that is how you arrive at this formula. And you can see that this is exactly the same as a formula, formula that Griffiths gives us. And so that's how you can justify this formula, by considering the, the ratio between the probability currents. And so now moving on to part D, we need to actually calculate the transmission coefficient for the setup that we have over here. So once again, uh, using the continuity requirements, we know that C is equal to A plus B, and then considering the continuity requirements of uh, dz dx, I'm not going to show you that again, it was in the last video, we can show that A minus B is equal to L divided by K times C. So now what we want to find is that we want to try to evaluate this term over here, so evaluate the transmission coefficient for just such a setup. And so that is what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is, is that we want to find the ratio between the absolute value of c squared and the va absolute value of a squared. So let's try to express c in terms of a. So given this, uh, these relationships over here, you can see that we can represent c in terms of a by adding these two equations together. So this, this is what you get on the left hand side, and on the right hand side you get 2a. And so you see that c is equal to 2a divided by 1 plus l over k. So that means 2k divided by k plus l 
times a is equal to c. And so that means the absolute value of c squared divided by the absolute value of a squared is just equal to this squared, so 2k divided by k plus l squared. And then you have the absolute value of a squared. And then you divide this by the absolute value of a squared, which of course is just equal to 1. So in the end you have 2k divided by k plus l squared. So that's the ratio between the absolute value of c uh, squared divided by the absolute value of a squared. And don't forget for the transmission coefficient, uh, we also need to multiply it by this term. So instead of writing, writing uh, using this uh, expression over here, I'm going to use l over k instead. So we call that both of these are just the same thing. So instead of using this, I'm just going to use l over k because right now everything is in terms of l and k. So I can just tack on this l over k. So you see that here, instead of 2k, this is actually 4k squared, cancels out with a k, which gives you 4kl divided by k plus l squared. And so we see that this is going to be the transmission coefficient. So in a way, uh, you can say that we're pretty much done for this problem, but then we can actually simplify this term over here and try to express everything in terms of, in terms of e and v0. So in terms of e and v0. So we can simplify this by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by k minus l squared. So what this, this is kind of similar to what we did in the last video. The denominator becomes k squared minus l squared squared. So you can see that uh, k squared k square minus l squared, that's just equal to 2me divided by h bar squared minus 2me minus v0 divided by h bar squared divided by 2mv0 divided by h bar squared. So this is what k squared minus l squared is. And then for uh, for the numerator, we have 4kl times k minus l squared. So that means 4k is equal to the square root of 2me divided by h bar. l is equal to the square root of 2me minus v0 over h bar. And then for the k minus uh, l squared, we have the square root of 2me divided by h bar minus square root of 2me minus v0 divided by h bar and then squared. So now that we can pull some of these like terms out. So here I can just pull a square root of 2m over h bar outside of this term. I can pull the same thing out of this term. They combine together to give me 2m divided by h bar squared. And in the end we have square root of e times the square root of e minus v0. And then we can actually do the same thing over here. So I'm just going to pull a square root of 2m divided by h bar outside of this term inside the bracket. And then don't forget there's a square on the outside, so when I do that, I also need to square that term. So that gives me another 2m over h bar, uh, h bar square. So I can just combine it with this term and then put a square over here. So that's what 4kl divided by uh, times k minus l square is going to be equal to. So now we're ready to evaluate this term. So the numerator is equal to all this. So 4 times the square root of e times the square root of e minus v0 times the square root of e minus the square root of e minus v0 squared. And then of course there are also these constants squared, but you can see that the denominator is equal to k squared minus l squared squared. So uh, I, k squared minus l squared is equal to this, and then when I take the square, everything is going to be squared. So I'm going to have a v0 squared, and I'm also going to have a 2m divided by h bar squared and then whole squared. So both of these are just going to cancel out in the numerator and denominator, so I can just not write these terms out. And so this is what you get. This is your transmission coefficient. So we are done with this problem. So one last thing we can check is that the, the transmission coefficient plus the reflection coefficient is equal to 1. So they should be equal to 1 because those two terms are just ratios. So now we're going to check that the sum of the transmission coefficient and the sum of the reflection coefficient is indeed equal to 1. So we know that I'm going to express everything in terms of k and l because it's easier to verify uh, the result in this case. So t we just found is equal to this. And if you look back at the last video, uh, the, refle the reflection coefficient was equal to this term. So now you can check if we add these two together. In the numerator, we have k squared minus 2kl plus l squared plus 4kl divided by k plus l squared. And of course, I can just put a 2 over here, 
and then obviously this term is we can just rewrite this as k plus l squared and then obviously this cancels out with the denominator and you can verify that this is indeed equal to 1 and so that checks the answer